Hello and welcome. It is Financial Modeling World Cup Stage 5 this weekend. So as usual, I'm taking a look at the question guide, trying to think about anything I can do to prepare. So, you know, case 1 should be simple enough. Case 3, pretty hard to predict. Uh, there's some basic financial modeling and then magic, which could literally mean anything. So I'm going to focus on case 2. Uh, so case 2 is by Andrew and it's about XL esports players uh, taking part in tournaments around the world. They travel to different places and, and face travel costs, but they can also win prize money. So you want to calculate their expected revenues, travel costs, and optimize their tournament schedule. So this reminded me quite a bit of this guy, uh, which is oh, go away, I'll update later. Uh, which is jet hockey, a case that Andrew wrote for uh, for round four in 2021. So I'm going to have a go at that today, and hopefully it will get me fresh and ready. So the idea is pretty simple. Uh, you uh, are, I don't know, some combination of the Jet Hockey League and the tourist board in this country, Fantastan, which is hosting the Jet Hockey World Championships. So uh, 60 of, there are 26 countries we get data for. 16 of those are going to qualify. Uh, so it starts off with just these 16 qualify in this seating order and these 10 do not qualify and then there's a different variation and then for the last question we have to make up our own. Um, and then the 16 teams come into this grid, they uh, play 8 round 1 matches from the 15th of April to the 18th of April, then they play quarterfinal matches from the 21st to the 24th of April, semi-final matches from the 26th to the 27th, third place game on the 30th, finals game on the 1st. Uh, so the idea is um, the, you know, for every country that qualifies, there's a bunch of supporters who come. Uh, some percentage of those are fans, uh, some percentage are just ordinary supporters. Ordinary supporters, well, e everybody arrives on the first day of the tournament, which is the 15th of April. Ordinary supporters leave the day after their team gets knocked out. Fans stay for the whole tournament, and even fans from countries that don't qualify uh, still come along. So that's why you've got percentage of fans here. Um, these numbers are NA for Fantastan because we're interested in tourism spend, so it's effectively zero uh, for them. And I'm going to make it actually zero because then I don't have to keep wrapping everything in if errors and so on. Um, so then we have an estimated spend per day by these supporters, um, and then the strength of the team, which determines, you know, of the two teams here who's going to make it to the quarterfinal, of the two teams here who's going to make it through, and so on. Uh, so we need to model the league to figure out how long every team is going to stick around for, and then we need to model the financials uh, to figure out what we're going to make from that. Um, oh, last thing, the, the strength is here, but uh, there's also a tiebreaker, which is uh, alphabetical order. If I'm trying to find an example, let's just... Uh, oops, all right. Highlight you, please. Okay, so yeah, here's here's a couple of 57s. So if Fantastan is playing Greyland, um, they're, they both have the same strength, so Fantastan wins because they come first alphabetically. So get rid of that. Oops. All right, so I'm just going to uh, start off by putting in a mod strength here. Uh, and for that, I'm just going to say uh, it's your strength minus uh, your number, because these are already listed in alphabetical order, over 1,000. And that way, this strength has no ties, uh, and we can just work with that directly. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is model the tournament. Uh, I will say um, the the way that you might kind of more intuitively think about this of you know fill in it fill in each of the teams here by looking them up in the number, and then you know fill in this by pointing to this and this and so on. Absolutely fine. Um, if you uh, if you want more instruction on how to do that than what I just described at a very high level, Lawrence Lau did a. a very speedy, uh, but very good walkthrough video in this case, I don't know, maybe a year or so ago. Uh, so check that one out. I'm going to show you, just for the sake of variation, a totally different method. Uh, and the idea is I'm going to pull out the dates of each of the games here and just kind of flatten everything out because it'll be easier to work with that way. So obviously when we talk flattening, I'm thinking to call. So first I'm just going to do this, uh, to call this. I'm going to one for ignore blanks and one for scan by column because I want to read all of these in the first column, then all of these in the second column, and so on. Uh, so first I'm going to turn these into dates, <clears throat> and then I just need to get rid of the uh, the couple of bits of text. So uh, I'm going to say let A be that, and I'm going to filter A where uh, is number A. And these are then the dates, so I've got uh, eight round one games, got four quarterfinal games, two semifinal games, a third place game, and a final. And once you have it in this format, it's, it's a good bit easier to work with. So in the first game, the seeds one and two are going to play, then seeds three and four, and so on. So 
Uh, in other words, the teams playing are going to be 1 and 2, 3 and 4, 5 and 6. You can use sequence to do that. Uh, and then we're going to look those up to get the country names. Now, before I do that, I'm going to add uh, one more section here, which is active. And I'll add something here, which is, uh, I guess, the choice for active. And I'll just make that a list from here. You don't actually have to make it a list, but style points. Uh, so then we're going to X look up this in here. Oops, sorry, that was too long. X look up this in here, returning from here. Uh, and that gives us that. And then we're going to look up in there. So we'll take this sequence numbers. X look up that in here. Lock returning from here. Lock. And that'll give us all the teams playing. Uh, and then we want to, so I guess we'll call it T1, T2. I want the winner. And to work out the winner, I'm going to get strength 1 and strength 2. And that will be X look up this. You could do it off the seeds, but uh, this way I'll be able to use the same formula for the later rounds as well. So from the country to the mod strength. Okay, and then the winner is just going to be, uh, I mean, there's lots of different ways you can do this, but if you look up 100 in here, turning from there, match mode, exact match or next smaller, that's going to give you that. So then I'm going to copy this down. Mm, sorry, one more. Okay, so then uh, my players in the quarterfinal, and again, you know, they're listed in order, so quarterfinal one pits the winners of the first two games here against each other. So I'm just going to uh, wrap rows of this block by two. Uh, and then I'm going to copy this formula. And again, because it's a dynamic array, it automatically resizes. So that's all good. I'm going to copy it, paste it there for the semifinal, for the third place, and for the final. Uh, so semifinal, same thing again. Whoops, wrap rows of these four teams by two. Uh, and for the final, I can just do two row of these two. Uh, and then for the third place, and this is the reason that I put the winner next to team one and team two, and put the strength off to the side, because it'll let me do the third place in a slightly niftier way. So th there are lots of ways you could do this a little bit more longhand, like, you know, just work out the loser the same way you worked out the winner. But since we've got six teams here, the teams that are repeated are the teams that make the final. So the teams that I want to have here are just the teams that do not make the final. So what I can do is first unwrap those six teams into a row, uh, and then I will take unique of that with uh, one to return unique columns and one to return items that appear exactly once. And that's it. And then I just cut that formula, paste it in there, and what is going on here? Okay, just a formatting issue. Right. So now I think we've got everything we need to come back over here and start modeling. So let's do that. Uh, so first, let's do clan numbers. And that's just going to be this times this. Um, fan spend is going to be number of fans times the daily spend times uh, the total days they're here for, which is... so. Uh, last day minus first day, and that's going to be plus two, because if they were there from the first day to the last day inclusive, you'd have to add plus one. So in other words, if you're here from day one to day two, two minus one is one, but that's two days, so that's plus one. But also they stay until the day after the final, so that's plus two. Um, you can also just do a quick check, because it tells you in the case description that that should be 18, and it is. Uh, so that's the fan spend. Then supporter. Uh, so supporters are only there if the team qualifies, so we'll just start with is number of this. Uh, then uh, number of supporters is just going to be if this, then number of supporters minus the number of fans, otherwise zero. Um, then uh, team last day. Uh, and that is going to be if this, then I want max ifs. Oh, actually, sorry, I'm going to need to tweak my format over here because I want to know if either of, uh, if the team is in either of these two columns, then give me the date. So could do that with funky array formulas, but 
it's easier to do it with max ifs if I just duplicate the date column. So now I can refer to this block and this block. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to say, uh, sorry, let's still wrap it in if. So if uh, there are supporters present, then max ifs. Uh, so I want the max of this lock where this lock is this. And I always like to get rid of it superfluous sheet name. Uh, sorry, and then otherwise, yeah, otherwise false. Uh, let's say otherwise. Any. And make that dates. Okay, so then uh, supporter days, and again, same logic as before, um, just if supporters, it's going to be the last day minus the first day of the tournament, which is up here, plus two for the same reason as before, uh, otherwise zero. Uh, and so you can see we've got two teams getting 18 days, Borea and Natis, and those are the two teams that are in the final, so that's good. Uh, and then finally, supporter spend. And that's going to be uh, days times numbers times daily spend. Let's open up a new closing bracket. Yes, get rid of that. Thank you. Okay, then total spend. And that's going to be supporters plus fans. Okay, and then we can just add that up. And that's the total we make for the tournament. Okay, and then let's go and answer some questions, see if we got them right. So, uh, question one, which team wins the tournament? The answer should be Borea, and it is good. Question two, how many days will the ordinary supporters of Conca spend in Fantastan? Uh, Conca, four days. Correct. How many fans will come? 87,840 is good. How many supporters will come? Uh, 567, 379 is good. How much money will fans spend? 365, 681, 678, yes. How many teams are there that will have more money spent by fans compared to the ordinary supporters? Not including the teams that didn't qualify, right? Because there are no ordinary supporters for the teams that didn't qualify, so those all have more fans spent. Uh, so we'll say fan greater than sup, and then we'll say if this, then this greater than this. Otherwise, I'm just going to wrap that in a, a minus minus, so I can just sum them up. Otherwise, zero. And that is two. And that's right. Good. How much money will be spent in total? And it's, yeah, one five one five three zero four eight one nine. Good. Okay. So then, question eight and nine, we switch to this format. Uh, so total spend is now two one zero zero six seven nine five four two. Yes, good. Uh, and which team supporters spend the most money? So total spend, the max of that is 441, 621.075. That's here, and that is Vanistan, which is right. And then the last question, uh, we need to figure out the idea is that the 16 strongest teams qualify, and we need to seed them in such a way as to maximize revenue, which incidentally is an extremely nefarious thing for a uh, sporting governing body to be doing, but we'll pass right over that. So I'm just going to extract the list of teams uh, here. So get rid of the DNQs, give cells up. Um, and for now, let's just put in sequence 16 so we have something. Uh, so then I'm going to use Solver to try to find, I made a video that talks about this in a little bit more detail recently, how to use Solver in Excel, so I'm not going to talk a whole lot about the ins and outs of it. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot this file comes with um, a sort of slightly broken Solver preloaded, uh, but that's fine. We'll just get rid of these, get rid of these, get rid of these, get rid of these, and then the variable cells we want to change are these, and the constraint is that we want these to be diff. And what diff means is they have to be whole numbers between 1 and the number of variables, which is 16. Um, and we'll let it run. Oh, wait, sorry. Stop. No. Stop. And 
Uh, sorry, got to make it actually be question 10. Oh, yeah, and I got to actually link it in as well would help. Uh, so blanks. Let's actually, you know, let's VLOOKUP, because this is actually a situation where VLOOKUP is better. Uh, they do still exist. Whoops. Uh, 420, because then I only have to go find the range once. Uh, okay, so now we have that scenario active, yes. So now we can go uh, data solver and set it running. And so we started off at 1394, and it's already got us up to 1.89 million. Uh, the correct answer is supposed to be 1.964 uh, billion. Wow, this is a profitable event. Um, but uh, b because there's just so many, um, you know, 16 factorial possible arrangements is like 220 trillion or something like that. Um, I don't know, I checked it when I did that other solver video. Uh, so this will do an impressively fast job of getting a good solution. Uh, it will very possibly not arrive at the best possible solution. Um, and luckily, you know, back then, uh, the marks were all or nothing. And I think possibly nobody got the marks in this question, or at least very few people did. I didn't even try it because it seemed like the kind of thing uh, where it would be very easy to do a lot of work and get close, but actually get no marks for it. Uh, but now the equivalent uh, questions these days get partial marks. It's just taking a second. There we go. All right, so we only made it to 1942 instead of 1964. It's still, you know, in real world terms, you'd feel pretty happy that you had kind of captured most of the value there. Uh, but in a world where you have to get an exactly right answer, we would have got no points for that. Uh, but this weekend, partial marks, we would get some points for it. So, uh, yeah, that's that's the gist of it. And if you're competing this weekend, then good luck. I'll see you next time.